Dinner assignment number 11, um, confidence, uh, 80% confidence interval on mu by using the formula as I mentioned a second ago, x bar plus minus z times sigma over n. Or again, the n is 5, the sigma is 287, the z when you look it up 10% on, on the left side of the table, that gives you the 80% in the middle, uh, was 1.28. And after all is said and done, everybody got a different answer. So for example, I'll take Alex's first since he gave it to me first. The ideal answer is 4.5. Some of you may get as high as 5, or 5.5, or 6, or 6.5, or 7, or as low as 4, 3.5, or 3. 2.5, 2, 1.5, 1, 1.5, 1. So again, Alex, what was your pair of numbers again? Did you give it to me yet? Oh yeah, 2.75 to 6. So he got 2.75, which is somewhere around here, going up to 6.04. So he said, I'm 80% sure that, that it's between there and the end. That happens to be right. And doing it once doesn't teach you too much, but doing it for a bunch of people might teach you something about what is a more fundamental understanding of a confidence interval. Anybody else that managed to calculate that pair of numbers while we were waiting yesterday? 1.91 and 5.29. So 1.91 and 5.29, which is around here. Now notice that the two lines should be theoretically exactly the same size, and they look like pretty close, because the, 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 the width of the interval is dependent upon these three numbers, which everybody should be using the same three numbers. But the, the height of the interval, or how low it is, depends upon the expo, which would be different from group to group. Obviously, her average was lower than 4.4 million viewers. So what was your average, Sarah? 3.6. 3 How's your? Uh, I got 3.16 to okay. 6.44. Okay. Also, it's pretty much okay. Well, if, you know, if, if it turns out to be a very different width, then we have a problem. Yes? Uh, we got 3.6 to 0.35. Ooh, okay, but that's, in a way, that's good. Uh, 3.6 in the high side. You know, and how much the low number? 0.35. Okay, here's one, here's zero, 0.35 is here. And again, so while you didn't make any personal mistake, you, you're saying I'm 80% sure the real answer is between here and here, and it turns out it's not between here and here. So you're, you know, only 80% of the class is gonna get it right according to the theory. And so far we have, thank God, one person who didn't get it. So now we're, we're close. The theory at this point, we have four people doing it. The theory would have predicted one out of, uh, yeah, so far four, now four out of five, getting one out of four, me, missing the, the mark, so to speak, that the correct answer of four point, covering 4.5 is exactly, you know, the theory says 80%, so oh, you do one three out of four is 75%, you're not going to get any closer than that. Four. But we can, let's try with 10 people, five people. Anybody else? So, Gina, what was yours? Uh, 2.36 to 5.64. 5.64. Okay. Now, now, now it's exactly, now it's exactly, now if I stop right here, I would be per perfectly proving my theory, but it's not really fair to stop when I'm <coughs> winning, so to speak. So let's keep going, we'll do 10 and then we have 10. Yes, Michael? Uh, well, what I got was 2.27 to 4.8. Okay, so 4.8, which is around here. See, the problem with that, 2.27, again, you see your line is smaller, which means, you made a minute. what number do you use for the Z? Let's put it that way. It's the same as before, 1.28. Right, and there's a sigma. And the, and the n is 5. Square root of 5? Oh. Okay, square root. So something went wrong. Let's try it again. Somebody else? Yes. I have 2.16 and 5.44. 5.44 is around here. 2.16. Right. Okay, good. And somebody else in the back? Uh, uh, 4.56 and 7.84. 4.56 is a good one because that misses it. And 7.84, which is here. That's great. So you're, you obviously picked an unusually large, not unusually, it's going to happen 20% at the time, an unusually large average, and that's why you missed it, which is a good example. Yes? 1.55, which is here. To what's the high number? 4.84. 4.84. Because you made it, thank God. Okay, so we have to, you know, okay, let's take another couple. Yes, Joe? I have uh, 2.56. 2.56, which is around here. 5.84. And Michael, you get a few, you do cal you do, we do the calculations? Yeah. So looking for one more. Oh, okay, we'll hold, yes. Yeah, 5.44 and 2.16. 5.44 and 2.16. 2.16. Something like that. 
Okay, yeah, maybe. Okay, the, the point is it really perfectly, um, do you have one also? No, okay, let's, let's, let's use 2.87 as a standard yes. Because that, because we know one of the rare things that the nice thing about the spinner is we know that the amount of spread of all those nine numbers or ten numbers is quant is two point eighty seven. It's not a matter of doubt. That's a fact. So if we know it. We're able, that's why we're allowed to use the z as old because they're in the second to the t. The point is, if somebody asks you one of the questions, what does it mean to be eighty percent confident? It means the following. That if you do this a hundred, if you did this ten times, again, think about it. in this case, we know the answer before we start. That's again the advantage from an educational point of view of the spinner assignment. We know the answer is 4.5 before we start. But in real life, when you do spit, when you do a confidence interval, you put your hand or you grab a sample of numbers from a population, you don't know the average. The whole point is you're trying to estimate the average. You don't know it. And then you make your interval and you say, I'm 80% confident means the following. If I repeat my process 10 times, again, in real life, you just do it one time. You don't do it 10 times. But if I would do it 10 times, 8 out of 10, I would cover it. But 2 out of 10 or 20 out of 100, I'd miss it. But one out of five, I'd miss it. So if it goes to take a more, com a more the typical, if I'm 95% confident, it means if I would do this 100 times, 95% of the time, I would get the right answer. But 5% of the time, I'd get the wrong answer, which is, again, means that I'm not 100% I'm not confident. It means there is a possibility my answer could be wrong. So that's, that's a deeper answer. So again, if there's a verbal question, which I believe there is in the chapter, then what does it mean to be 85 or 95 or 99% confident? The answer has to include the statement that if I repeat this process a hundred times, or any large number of times, then 80% of those, of those times I'd be getting the right answer, meaning I'd be covering the mu with my interval, and conversely, 20% of the time I'd be missing that answer, as we see. And we, as we see, very again, most of the time it doesn't work out exactly two out of, I get, I get three out of 11, or one out of nine, but in this case it worked out perfectly, two out of 10. Michael, you got your calculation? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> 2.46 and 5.74. 2.46, which is around here, 5.74, which is around here. Okay, good. Okay, so now we got 2 out of 11, but it doesn't really change things too much. Okay, that's, going, that's giving you a, a deeper interpretation of, of the part of the chapter is what is a confidence interval. Now we're going to learn, so it turns out what you're seeing here, while you do need it for the two points or four points on the spinner assignment, this will not be on the test because in real life, Knowing the sigma, which we happen to know for the spinner assignment is 2.87, is not really available. Why is it not available? Because we don't, we have a population. Did I go beyond the, my, my boundaries here? We have a population. We have a population, which is, can be symbolized by a big, big, big box or a big circle. And we'd like to know the average of the population. Why do we like to know that? We don't have access to every individual in the population. But if we don't have access to every individual, how do we know the sigma? We don't know the sigma. And again, the spinner assignment is a rare exception because it's a very regular population. But in real life, we don't know the sigma. Well, if you don't know the sigma, you can't leave a blank. And you can't put down a zero. You can't put down a one. I mean, what number are you going to put in there? So the answer is, you, what's the next best thing to a sigma? And some of you know this from stat one, or just may even know it from when I teach this to my stat one students, even they know it sometimes. What's the next best thing to having sigma? Sigma refers to the true value of the entire population standard deviation. Yes? Standard error of the mean? No, the standard error of the mean would be sigma divided by A. In order to get the standard error of the mean from that point of view, you'd have to know the sigma. So you're sort of going in circles. So thanks for trying. So how would you know sigma? Yes? Standard deviation. So the answer is the standard deviation of the sample. In other words, you already have, you don't have, you know, think about it from a very philosophical, uh, uh, think about it from, we, 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 so we, we don't know the mu. So we take a sample of numbers, and in the sample we calculate the average. So the average tells us something about the mu. But we can also, for the same money already, you have the same numbers, plug them into the S, you can plug it into the S formula, plug it into the X bar formula, these are the numbers. This is the sample of whatever. And the S will tell us something about the sigma. Because the S tells you the standard deviation of the sample should be similar to the standard deviation of the population if the, if the sample is representative of the population. I think it's pretty much common sense. So now the formula, the new version of the formula, is going to be, instead of X bar plus or minus Z times sigma over N, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to substitute the more practical S over N. So what we're doing is substituting instead of the sigma the standard deviation of the sample. But now, if you think about it further without going into some mathematical proof, but again, it's common sense, that which is more accurate, the sigma or the N? The sigma or the standard deviation? Obviously.